kindergarten friends, Mrs. Fusco here. I'm so happy to be working with you this week. I hope you got the chance to celebrate your moms and you followed directions and maybe you made your mom a beautiful card, maybe even read her a story. I hope you had a beautiful weekend with your family and you stayed warm. And I thought this week we could practice a little bit more about with what Miss Bancheri did with you last week, which is being flexible with your vowel sounds and practicing seeing that E at the end, that, seeing that silent E at the end of words. Okay, let's get started. Before we get started, let's review our short and long vowel sounds together. Let's start with our short vowel sounds. A a apple e e ed i i itch o a octopus u a umbrella awesome job kindergartners now let's go back and make their long vowel sounds remember Long vowel sounds means the vowel is going to say its name. Are you ready? A E I O and U. Great job. Now that our lips are warmed up, Let's practice our H brothers. Remember, H brothers are two letters that make one sound. Like WH, W, whale. Say it with me, W, whale. TH, thumb. H shark and CH ch cheese. I want you to keep a lookout for these in our story that we're going to read today. You might see some of these H brothers. Hi friends, before we read today, we're gonna to do some word work. So what you're going to need for this part of the video is, if you have magnetic letters, go get them. If you don't have magnetic letters, that's okay. You can get a piece of paper and cut some squares out, or you can just get a plain piece of paper and write these letters on the top so you know which letters you might need as we make some words. Okay, I'm going to tell you the letters that you're going to need, and then you can pause the video and go grab these letters. You're going to need N, H, P, S, R, E, D, U, T, and O. So if you need a little extra time to get these letters or write these letters down, just pause the video. Okay, hopefully you have all the letters that you need. And we're going to build some words. Now, some of our words 
are going to have the short vowel sound, and some of our words are going to have the long vowel sound. And remember, if you hear that vowel saying its name, what needs to be at the end? Our silent E, okay? So if you hear that vowel saying its name, we have to put silent E at the end. All right, we're going to use stretch, and we're going to think about the sounds in these words. Our first word is top. T. Ah. Go ahead and build that word. Okay. Let's. Is this what your word looks like? Let's check it. When I mean check it, I mean put your finger under each letter as you say it and make sure you use the letter that makes that sound. So watch this. T. Ah. P. Top. Awesome job. Okay. Now listen carefully. I want you to change one letter. I want you to change top into hop. So put your finger on your word and let's figure out what letter we have to change. We're going to say the word hop. <gasps> Wait a minute. <sighs> that doesn't make the <sighs> sound. This is the letter we have to change. We're going to take it away. What letter makes the <sighs> sound? Find it. Up, hop, good job. Now we're gonna change a letter again. This time I want you to make the word hope. Hmm. Let's put our finger under and see which letter we're going to have to change. <sighs> oh, hmm. You don't have to change a letter, but if O is saying its name, are you thinking what I'm thinking? O. A letter. We don't have to take away a letter. We have to add that silent E. We have to see the E. And when we see that E, we know that O is going to say its name. Hope. Okay, we're going to change hope to rope. Let's see what letter we have to change. R. H doesn't make the R sound. What makes the R sound? Find that letter. Check it. R. O. Why do we have E there? Because O is saying its name. Good job. I want you to change rope to road. I rode my bike down the street. Road. Okay, let's check it. R O D. Up. That's not the right letter. Let's switch it. That's the one we have to change. R-O-D. Makes that D sound. You said D. Good job. R-O-D. Road. Now we're going to make road into rod. I had a metal rod in my garage. R-O-D. Hmm. I have these letters, but O, oh, what sound was O making? R-O-D. It was making a short sound. Do we need silent E anymore? Mm-hmm. Take it away. R-O-D. 
odd rod. Good job. Now we're going to turn rod into nod. Like nod your head. Let's see what letter we have to change. Mm. Oh, found it. Take away our R. And what letter do we have to put? Mm. Odd. Nod. Awesome job. We're going to turn nod into not. Not. Let's check it. Mm. Ah. Oh, we found it. it. was at the end this time. What letter do we have to put at the end of not? You said a T. Kiss your brain. Good job. Now we're going to turn not to nut. Nut. Let's see what letter we have to change. Mm, uh, oh, what vowel makes the uh sound? Mm, uh, t, nut. Good job. Now, I have a challenge word for you. I want to see if you can spell the word nose. Nose. Use the letters on your board to spell the word nose. Okay. Let's see your word. Show me. Let's see. Let's check it. Nose. That. What sound is the S making? Mm Sometimes we have to be flexible. Sometimes S can kind of sound like a Z. And we had to know that if O is saying its name, we need silent E at the end. If you got that challenge word, kiss your brain. Your work, your brain's working hard today. All right. Let's get ready to read our story. As we get ready to read together, I want to remind you kindergartners, if you get stuck on a word before you ask a grown up for help, you should try using one of your strategies. You could check the picture, think about the sounds in the word. That's when you would tap and sweep a word. If you see a silent E at the end of the word, we're going to be flexible with our vowel sounds. And we might even have to cover up the ending to help us figure out a word we don't know. Why we're reading, if you get stuck on a word, look for Mrs. Fusco's Bitmoji and look in my thought bubble. It will give you a clue to help you figure out what strategy to use to help you puzzle through that tricky word. Since you guys are learning all about farms, I thought we could read this story about a pig. And the pig's name is Pinky, probably because she's pink. So we're gonna read the story, Pinky the Pig. But we're gonna find out that Pinky isn't really that happy. And we have to figure out what is bothering our poor Pinky the pig. Let's take a picture walk. Oh, look at poor Pinky. She looks so sad. But there's the farmer. And look what he has in his hand. Some carrots. How many carrots does he have in his hand? Let's count them. One, two, three. Say the word three. I hear an H, brother. I hear the TH. Can you find the word three? 
Look for that H, brother. Did you find it? Great job. It says he got three carrots for the pig. Hmm. It doesn't look like that's going to make her happy. We're going to have to read to find out if the farmer can cheer up Pinky. Well, the farmer couldn't cheer Pinky up. So here comes the little girl and she's trying to cheer Pinky up. What does she have in her hand? Apples. How many apples does she have? Let's count them. One, two, t -t -t two. I hear a T in the beginning of that word, t -t -t two. Can you find the word two? Awesome job, there it is. She got two apples for Pinky. It doesn't look like that cheered Pinky up either. Okay, now that we've looked at some tricky words in our story, let's go back to the beginning and read to see what is going on with Pinky. I'm a little bit concerned that something's really wrong. She seems really sad. Let's read to find out if we can figure out why Pinky is so sad. Okay, now remember, before we even look at the words, what do we need to do? That's right, you need to give me five. Let's check out that picture for five seconds and see what we can learn. Oh, look at Pinky. She does not look happy. She looks really sad. Okay. Now let's read and see if we can figure out why she looks so sad. Pinky, I don't know this word. Which strategy could I use to help me figure out this word? I see an ending. If I cover up this ending, now I see a sight word. Do you see it? Pinky looked sad. Mm, she sure does. Okay, kindergartners, give me five. Okay. I don't know this word. I do. I know. I'm going to try to tap and sweep that word. P -op. P -op. Pop. Pop said Pinky. I'm stuck again. I see an ending. I'm going to cover it up. Do you see that sight word now? Like. Pinky likes carrots. Pop said Pinky likes carrots. He got three carrots for the pig. She's still not happy though. Let's keep reading. Okay, give me five. Mm. 
Ooh, I see that little girl and she has some apples in her hand. Okay, let's read to see if that cheers up Peggy, Pinky. I'm stuck. Wait a minute. I see something at the end of that word. Do you see it too? Do you see that silent E? Let's try. We know that when silent E is there, our other vowel is going to say its name. Let's try it out. Er, O's. Er, O's. Rose. Rose said, Pinky likes apples. She got two apples for Pinky. Great job being flexible. Okay, give me five. I notice now Rose and Pop are trying to cheer up Pinky. Look what they have. Looks like a beach ball. Pinky doesn't look very interested. Let's read and find out what's going on. Pinky likes her ball, Pop said. He got a big ball for Pinky. Nope, that didn't cheer her up either. Okay, give me five. Look at what's going on here. Both Rose and Pinky kind of have like this confused look on their face. Hmm. Oh no. Looks like the umbrella has holes in it. Well, that's not going to work. I wonder why she has an umbrella. It's not raining. Let's read. Pinky likes her big. Oh man, that's a big word. I am not going to want to tap and sweep that word. Do you guys know what I should do? Did you say check the pictures? Pinky likes her big uh, uh, umbrella. Pinky likes her big umbrella, Rose said. She got the big umbrella for the pig. I'm still wondering why they have that umbrella when it's not raining. Give me five, kindergartners. Jeez, Pinky still does not look happy. I'm really getting worried. They gave her food and toys, and she is still not looking happy. Maybe she's sick. Let's read to find out. Oh, but I'm stuck on this word. I'm noticing other words that I don't know on the page too. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's tap and sweep. B, but, 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 Pinky looked sad. 
she looked at at hat she looked hat too <gasps> yes look at the sun i bet she is really hot maybe why maybe that's why she's not happy because she's super hot Okay, kindergartners, give me five. Ooh, look at Pinky and Mom Miss Page. It looks like she's starting to get happy. And look at Rose. She looks happy too. Let's read to find out what changed Pinky's mood. Rose got the hmm. I see the E. Do you guys see that E? That means O is going to say its name. O's. O's. Hose. Rose got the hose. Did anyone else use a different strategy? If some of you check the picture to figure out hose, kiss your brains. Sometimes there's more than one way to figure out a puzzling word. You could tap and sweep because you noticed the silent E, or you could have checked the picture and saw that Rose had the hose in her hand. Good job. Rose got the hose. Pinky likes mud, she said. Oh, give me five. Look at Pinky. She looks super happy now. Oh, I bet that water and that mud feels so good on her hot skin. Let's see. Pinky looked happy. She, hmm, <gasps> I see that sight word if I cover up that ending. L-O-V-E, love. She loved mud. Oh, I'm so glad they finally figured out what was bothering P Pinky. She was hot. Now that we read the story, let's talk about our story. And remember, sometimes when we talk about a story, we ask WH questions. And our grid here can help us answer mm -hmm. those WH questions. Like someone might say, where did this story take place? If someone uses the word where, that means they're looking for a place, like a house or school or a store or a country or a city, okay? If someone says when, that means they're looking for a time like morning time, night time, school time, bedtime. If they use the word who, W-H-O, that means they're looking for a person or the characters in our story. That could be a teacher, kids, mom and dad. 
Sometimes it can even be animals. Animals can be characters too. Or they might say what. And when they use the word what, they're looking for a thing like a backpack or lunch or toys. Okay, or what were you doing? Were you drinking? Did you push something? Were you running? So now that we've reviewed our chart, let's talk about our story. Where did our story take place? Where, I'm looking for a place, did our story take place? Think back to the pictures. Did you say a farm? You're right. Our story took place on a farm. Who was our story about? Who? W-H-O. That means I'm looking for a person or an animal. Who was our story about? It was about Pinky, right? Pinky the pig. And Pinky was not happy, was she? And Pop and Rose tried all of these things to help her make, get happy. They gave her apples. They gave her carrots. They gave her her ball and her umbrella. But none of those things made Pinky happy. What? I'm looking for a thing. What solves Pinky's problem? What made Pinky happy? Did you say mud? Kiss your brain. You're right. Pinky was hot and the mud cooled her off. Awesome job, kindergartners. I had so much fun practicing Silent E with you this week. When you're reading your books at home, keep a lookout for Silent E. And when you see it, you gotta see that E. You have to make that long vowel sound, okay? So keep your eyes open for those Silent E's. I can't wait until we see you and miss you. And I hope to see you soon. Toodaloo, kangaroos.